I'm Stuart Thompson, editor of Digital TV Europe. I'm here with Jörg Mayer, who's the uh, chief commercial officer of Zatu. Jörg, we all know that uh, things are getting more competitive for uh, network operators. Why is an up-to-date IPTV platform critical now for, for their success? So I, I see three main reasons. So the first reason is that end customers still expect telephony, internet uh, access, and uh, TV coming out of one hand. Um, it's a very important, so the second reason, it's a very important tool for operators for customer acquisition and also customer retention. And this is related to the third reason, which is that there is an in ever increasing competition with national and also multinational operators uh, at the time. So these three reasons make it very crucial for an operator to have an uh, up-to-date IPTV platform. In addition to that, looking at the overall product portfolio of, an, of an, a network operator, the TV product is the product which uh, has most visibility to the end customer. So it's being used on a daily basis, it's, it's uh, showing the brand of the operator to the, uh, to the end customer on a daily basis, and this makes it a very special and very important product. Absolutely. So what do you see as the big challenges that uh, operators face when they're putting in their operating their own IPTV platform? Yeah. So the, the TV or the TV product went from a pure linear uh, offering on, on the TV set in the living room to a multi-device IPTV platform. And this comes especially um, with a lot of more content that has to be offered. It's not only more channels, it's also more catch-up TV, it's on-demand content and so on. It comes with a lot of more features that have to be supported, whether it's uh, instant restart of a show or whether it's a live pause and, and a lot of functionalities that comes in addition. It comes with many more devices that have to be supported. So it's still a set of box in the living room, but it's also the smartphones and tablets that have to be supported. It's connected TV applications that have to be offered and so on. And it comes also, and uh, not at least also, with new boss, uh, business models that have to be supported, whether it's uh, still subscription-based, whether it's trans uh, transactional, and whether it's more and more also ad finance business models. And all of this together brings a lot of complexity, and to handle this complexity needs a lot of resources, and it's, uh, uh, um, uh, it's for many operators, they're lacking the critical size to then build and platform on their own and maintain it on their own. Right, so what solutions are on offer? So the good, uh, 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 the good thing is that there are solutions in the market, white label solutions, end-to-end -end solutions, like for example, the uh, two uh, TV platform solution. These white label solutions do cover all of the features that I just, uh, just mentioned. They do cover the complexity, um, and they come with the advantage that they are using this, their platform or the, the underlying platform on a number of operators, a four number of operators, which comes with synergies and which, which allows the, uh, the um, solution provider to, uh, to scale yeah, on the basis of a lot of households and to have the critical size just by leveraging themselves over um, uh, different operators. Um, and last but not least, these white label solutions, they also come with the advantage that, um, that they are technically on par with the solutions of, uh, of the tier one telcos, which has been shown from independent studies. Right, so you've talked a bit about the advantages of, of the, uh, the white label solution. What do you see as the key elements that need to be uh, incorporated within that? Yeah, so apart from the, let's say, the most obvious things, which is to cover really all these features, being live and non-live usage, being the different content uh, parts and so on, and, and, and uh, also being um, yeah, covering all the requirements that come from content providers, come from end customers. So besides these more obvious, I would say, almost uh, general requirements that have to be covered, the, it's, um, if you look at um, uh, up-to-date solutions, then they come also with um, support for the operator uh, to engage and to, to um, uh, and to benefit from new uh, business models. So what do I mean with this? So these, uh, these platforms like ours, they support um, to monetize the content better. So there are upselling functionalities, there's the possibility to buy access to content directly within the, within the TV overlay yeah, for the end user. So it's uh, monetizing the content. It's also that these platforms like ours uh, do support the operator in communicating with the end customer. So we've got a notification feature where it's possible to send a message also directly onto the, the TV screen where the, uh, the end customer is 
watching hours and hours a day uh, content, and it provides access to then communicate directly. And it also um, uh, is very important that more and more ad finance business models are supported from these platforms. So to then allow the, um, also the operator to benefit from new business models together with the content partners of these. These are three very, from my point of view, very, very important, um, yeah, let's say features that these white label platforms bring with them. Right. And finally, Jörg, what do you think are the, the key things that a network operator really needs to think about when choosing a platform? Yeah, so uh, when once the operator decided on, okay, he, they want to offer an, an, a TV product, and then of course the question quickly is, okay, how do we approach it? Is it, do we build it on our own? Do we go with the white label solution? Do we go with the best of breed uh, approach where we still have to handle a lot of um, uh, vendors? So uh, there are a couple of questions that have to be taken into account from the operator when taking this decision. And the first question actually is as easy as what do we want to achieve with the TV product? Is it that we're doing it for the TV product itself or is it rather that it shall support other product ranges like especially the, the broadband access product? So what is, how do we at the end of the day um, measure the success of our TV product? When would we say that, okay, this now is a success? What is the key uh, indicating uh, uh, factor for that. So that's the first question, um, what do we want to achieve? The second question then is, um, uh, regarding the team, what do we want to build in-house as a team? Which resources, which know-how do we think that it's important for us as an operator to have in-house? Should we, in which, in which area should we uh, engage and, and how big the team would we be willing to invest in-house? And this is very related then with the third question also, uh, providing clear guidance on the business case. Is it uh, that it's expected to be the, the TV product uh, profitable in itself? Uh, is there a, um, a positive margin expected to come out of the TV product in a narrow sense? Or is it rather that uh, the TV product shall support other business lines and is kind of uh, financed also with these uh, effects that it supports other business lines? So these would be the three main questions from my point of view on a strategic level that an operator should uh, ask themselves before then taking the decision on um, how to, um, yeah, uh, which, for which solution to go for. Right, there's a lot to think about. Jörg, thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Jörg.